that. Okay, first of all, this is a new column. And so the one thing about a new column is you want to cut off a little bit on the front and stuff. You don't know what kind of, you know, it's gone through and stuff. They always come with these little caps on them, uh, okay. just to protect them because uh, any kind of oxygen inside of them, uh, especially if they get heated up with oxygen in them, it destroys them. So uh, if you ever have a leak, uh, sometimes that will destroy your column. Or if there's no carrier flow and it gets heated up, then it will destroy it because the, the stationary phase inside of the column is actually kind of a wax type material. And if it doesn't have the carrier flow going over it and stuff to kind of keep it cool and kind of a, in a rigid state, uh, then it will actually just melt like wax and pull to the bottom. So, so anyhow, so the, the one thing that Perk and Elmer does, if you want to see on, on here on the screen, um, a lot of people, you know, like um, Einstein said, you don't need to remember everything, you just need to know where to find the answers to it. Okay. So, uh, under tools, there's utilities, and then there's column length calculator. Okay. And so, uh, we have a small little ruler here taped to the side or stuck to the side. And on the injector, these are programmable split splitless injectors. So, they cool down, they have a cooling fan on them and stuff, and you can set up a ramp on them. So, funny because whether it's in inches or millimeters for the injector it always shows um, in millimeters mm. so it's 38 to 44 uh, millimeters and it, as you can see here from back of that and so that's when you uh, get your comb you cut off a little bit of the front then you feed through first of all this little septum because it's going to kind of help hold everything in place as you put it up there okay. so it's not changing its length and stuff and then you have your nut, and then you have your ferrule. And on our ferrules, uh, it's a little hard to see without a proper background, but ours, uh, unlike Agilent, Agilent's tapers up into the injection port, ours tapers into the nut. Uh, so there's a, a rough edge on this and a, a, a smooth edge. Okay. And so after you've gone through all this stuff, there may be things on the very end of the column. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is take and, and putting this at a 45 degree angle and as square as you can to the column, just kind of score it mm -hmm. and then flick it and it'll break off clean. Okay. Pull out part of this. back of the nut you want about you want from 44 to 38 so if you put it right around in here and then just pull it down until the top of the column is right there at the beginning line and you're somewhere between the 40 44 and 38 and and then the septum actually helps hold it at the right length on the side here. It's not easy to see. Let me get out a flashlight here. Oh yeah. Here, I've got it. Get one on you? Yeah. Thanks. So then you just feed the column up the side of the bottom of the Injection port, and then trying to hold everything in place so that nothing slips around or slips down. <laughs> you slowly tighten up the nut. Usually it's about an eighth or a quarter turn more past finger tight. Okay. So I usually do that. And then I take, um, excuse me for a second, take and get the reef detector. Ah.
so you're turning on the carrier gas on the injection port for the one that we just installed okay and so we'll let it stabilize a little bit and stuff and then what we'll do is we'll check to see if we have any leaks right around uh, that fitting and okay. if we do we tighten it up until it stops uh, setting off the leak detector and once we're at that point then um, we know it's not too tight where it's it's choking off the column and um, but it's at a proper point where it's sealed in. And we seem to be good. So the next thing you want to do before you start conditioning your column mm -hmm. is you want to make sure that there's uh, enough carrier. So we just have a container with methanol in it. We take the other end of the column that's going to go up into the FID, or the prevent in this case, and just make sure that we have bubbles. So that way we know for sure that we didn't have a leak back there and we do have good carrier flow here. It should be, it should come out very, very hefty like this. Okay. So, and if, you, if it's not, then it could be that the column is actually too tight went to loosen it up but this is perfect so okay. and so all we do then for conditioning the column is since uh, you guys run around 225 as an isothermic correct uh, 330 is the max uh, temperature for the column so what we'll do is we'll set it for 300 degrees on the oven and we'll allow uh, this just to be uh, not connected to the detector and just to bleed off into space so that way any contaminants that come off the column don't end up on the FID and then tomorrow morning, we'll just let condition overnight. And then tomorrow morning, we'll just go ahead and hook it up and see how our signal looks. Okay. If we do have issues, then we'll have to kind of rebuild the prevent and do all the stuff from scratch. Okay. Okay. So, so that's where we stand now. All right.